Hello and welcome back my beautiful froggy army to another video. Today I have a let's play for you but it's gonna be in kind of like a speed build style since I had so much footage and I did so much in this video. I'm just gonna speed all of it up so we're not having like a hour and a half video. <laughs> so yeah as you can see by the title I'm gonna be fixing up some areas today. There's a couple of spots on my island that I just have not liked and I haven't known what to do with so that's what we're gonna be doing and the first area is here by Marcy's house. I did decorate Marcy's house in a previous live stream and this is what it looks like. Her house area is fine but I just have this like long awkward strip of sand on the beach that I didn't know what to do with and I'm kind of saving the majority of my beaches for later because I don't know I'll probably just do a video where I just decorate all of them or do it on a stream or something but I decided to do something with this little area just because I felt like there was nothing I could really do here so I just decided to do like a little canopy of palm trees or coconut trees or whatever. Um, a big theme in this video is kind of keeping areas simple because my island is very very cluttered and I like it cluttered. I like it like that but for these little awkward transition areas I feel like if I add more clutter it's gonna be way too much and way too overwhelming especially for those of you who want to come into my dream address and like walk around like I've already made it so difficult for myself who like knows the island like the back of my hand like I can't imagine people trying to just like go explore so I try to keep it more simple so just some palm trees some flowers some little decor on the edge I put a little snail model because I thought it was really cute and I love snails and yeah I just put those little lanterns so at nighttime it'll kind of light up the walkway and be really cute and I didn't want to clutter it up with custom designs so I just put a few and I thought it turned out really good like I said I'm just trying to keep it simple Marcy's house is already kind of cluttered and then like the little painting area below it is pretty filled in so I didn't want to make it too too complicated so this was pretty quick and easy and just you know like I said after some palm trees and some custom designs and some flowers there we go that's that's pretty much it <laughs> so the next area is this little like strip of land I did this in uh, that video where I did this I forgot which one it is but anyway I have these two strips and they're just kind of there and they're just kind of awkward and it's really hard to decorate these areas because I still want to make sure that I can walk through them but there's only like one two tiles of space to work with and I didn't want to just like leave it naked so I did put that path and I didn't finish it um, I also did that like off camera so that's why you didn't see me doing the path the little ice path so I wasn't able to finish it so that's why I put like a little uh, cherry blossom petal pile there because there's literally just like no physical space for me to continue it and it worked out good that's a tip that I have if you can't <laughs> finish a path for any reason and you just want to cover up like the the uh, sharp the blunt edge there just just put some leaves on it put some petals on it you're good <laughs> so i stuck with items that you can walk over like custom designs and flowers and these little saplings and stuff but also all of these items i'll put them on the screen you can walk over them and i felt like this was really helpful for me to like think about so if you're ever struggling with an area that's super tiny and you need space to walk then go ahead and go with some of those items and this is how it turned out it's nothing special but we did it <laughs> and then the next area is the area right below it and this was kind of a struggle area let me just say so first i cleared off all of the custom designs and paths that was there it was a lot and it kind of took a while but whatever we got it done i also decided to just kind of clean up this little area right here like this little triangle of space before i decided to go on to the actual like path area the skinny path area so i just did some simple stuff over here but uh, while I do this, let me tell you, uh, I just didn't know what to do for this part of my island. I struggled so much. I tried to do this first, right? Just like in-game path, keep it simple. And I was like, no, I gotta spice it up. So I put this on it and I kept it like that. And yeah, you'll just, you'll see that for the rest of the video, but it did not end up like that. I just ended up hating it. So I took it all off um like i said in the rest of the video if you see this little area and it looked like the first draft just yeah i i went back and uh redid it and i'll show you that in a second here after all this 
but yeah i don't know why i just struggled and i don't know why it looked so bad to me but like the concept was there the execution was good maybe it was like maybe it's just like the the dirt color and like the fact that it's winter i don't know but i ended up just putting the ice path on there and i've said this before uh the ice path will be leaving eventually i'm gonna bring in my leaf path again i just gotta do it i'm too lazy to go and put the code in to the able sisters kiosk but i promise i'll do it <laughs> so for now i just put the leaf the ice path anywhere i want the leaf path so yeah, I just ended up putting that over everything. Uh, I ended up keeping the in-game path just so I could have some stuff on my map. That was the sole reason, so yeah, that's pretty much it. On to the next area. So, this is where things start to get a little spicy. <laughs> so, I have been perplexed. I have been stumped. Uh, I have been roadblocked, mentally blocked, by the area around the cafe. This is Meringue and Tia's cafe. It is, I feel like, one of my most iconic builds. I did it on our very first stream? No. Yes? I can't remember. Um, I did it on stream and I had a ton of fun doing it and I first cleared everything away as you saw and then I took this stone path and I was like hmm maybe I can make like another additional like dining area or seating area next to it right so that's what i started off doing but then i ended up liking the stone path a lot and i i just decided to redo the whole cafe auto impulse you know you know when that happens when you just decide to redo your entire cafe and animal crossing because you secretly not liked it for a long time and then you just do it one day because you were at your breaking point don't you know i'm just kidding i'm making that into a way bigger deal than it actually is um i have really liked the cafe i loved how i designed it but even when i built it i struggled with the path choice i remember on stream struggling and i didn't know like what to put and for some reason i decided to go with the light dirt for a cafe and put like weeds and stuff in there i don't know what i was thinking it's a vibe but at the same time it's not a vibe like i had good fun while it lasted but i felt like it needed a more polished look because so much of my island is like natural stuff and like we got forests we got lakes we got waterfalls we got like a lot of natural things i don't really have a lot of like city elements or residential stuff really all i use is like flowers and bushes i don't really have stores i don't have other cafes i don't have like shopping areas really everything is so natural so i felt like i wanted to break it up a little bit and at least have like one like designated area that was like not as crazy filled with weeds and flowers you, you get what i'm trying to say <laughs> so that's what i was trying to do and i think i executed it okay and i was really scared to do this i've been wanting to change the dirt for a long long time actually but i was too scared because i felt like if i picked everything up i would ruin it and like not remember how it was and just like forever ruin it and it's yeah, I was scared, but I just decided to do it because I got finished my freaking island, okay? <laughs> and I also decided, or I tried to put this picnic blanket, like, as the floor, and I was like, hmm, what if I just make the floor gingham? But I don't end up doing that. If you, just in case you hate it, I, I don't end up doing it. And just in case you like it over the stone, then I am so sorry. I kind of liked it, but I was like, ah, it's, it's a little too bright. It's a little too bright for me. And it might be just because we're in winter and there's like white all around us. Maybe in cherry blossom season, it would actually look nice, but it's too late for that. <laughs> I just ended up going with the stone and I think it makes it look a lot more polished and a lot more like a cafe. <laughs> if I'm being honest, it looks more like it's actually like inside quote unquote even though it's not actually inside i also wanted to try to like do walls and stuff with the climbing walls but i only had one and i was too lazy to order more so i just put the one there and i added these simple panels with like the little dishes and teapots for like you know like there's more shelves with like 
dishes and teapots and it just looks so cute. I like it. I love it so much. But yeah, there's a lot of changes and I was sad to say goodbye to the original, but I also have been needing this change, have been wanting it, been craving it. So I'm really happy with how, how it turned out and I can't wait for you guys to see it because right now it doesn't look like much. It don't look like much, but I spent so long on this and I didn't even like intend to, but I'm glad I did. And then I also added the drink machine because I thought that made it look more like a cafe or like a little restaurant, you know, they got their little vending machines. Even though they're a cafe, shouldn't they be selling the drinks at the counter? I don't know, maybe you buy like sodas and stuff there, you know? Okay, until I get into an important part in this speed build uh, section, I'm just gonna talk about Pepper because honestly the rest of this is just like me like shoving things around and it's not really anything that I can talk about. So I'm just gonna talk about Pepper because when is there not a good time to talk about pepper. Never. Never is the answer. And uh, in case you don't know, Pepper is my tuxedo cat. He's four years old. He's very whiny and talkative and he's the best cat in the world. I don't care what you say. If you think your cat is better, both of our cats can fight about it, okay? And Pepper will win. Trust me. He's a chonkus. He is a chonkus. And he is so cute. So I know I would always talk about his uh, printer because he loves- he loved to sit on the printer. And uh, he would just sit on like the hard printer and I felt bad and then I bought him like a little cushion for it and he loved it and he would sleep there all the time. But lately he hasn't slept on the printer anymore. He never goes up there anymore. And I guess this is normal for cats to just, to just like find different spots where they love to sit and like change it up. Cause he's had like three new spots. So first there was the printer and behind my monitors. And when I had my old monitors, he could actually lay down like directly behind them on my desk. But when I got my new ones, he doesn't fit there anymore. So I have like a little um, storage thing next to my desk that is still in front of the window. So he can sit there and he'll sit there and he'll try to lay down behind my monitors like he used to, but he doesn't fit because he's a chonkus. So he'll just sit there or like lay kind of like half on um, the shelf and like half on the, what's it called? The windowsill where he like doesn't really fit either. I don't know. <laughs> he tries his best. And then he has also been loving the top of the couch because we have a couch in here too in our office and he just loves sleeping on like the top of it. Not on the actual couch when there's more space, just like on the top. <laughs> He's so cute. I'm guessing it's because it has height which I get. I know cats love to sleep like up high, so I guess that's why. Oh yeah, okay, really quick. I am putting fences, stone fencing, because it matches the floor and it's going to be like walls in the cafe. I felt like the stone fencing was like the most like solid. It didn't really look like fence. It looks kind of more like walls, so that's why I picked it and I left lots of open areas for me to walk through and then I start making like this little seating area outside. Um, which honestly, who cares about that? Let's just go back to Pepper. So Pepper loves to sleep on the top of the couch also. He's been sleeping there a little bit less, but he sleeps there more, like more than the printer. The printer hasn't been touched anymore. And then um, my boyfriend also ordered something and it came in like a big box and it's like figures or, so or something that he hasn't put up yet. So they're in a box, which is actually like the same height as the couch so like the the seating part where you actually sit it's like the same height and it just sits there and it's like an l shapes couch and it sits in like the like the little corner of the l like in the couch so that box has been there for like a month or two and pepper recently found out that he loves to lay on that box <laughs> and he would just fall asleep on the box and i'm like pepper it's a cardboard box and there's a couch next to you what are you doing sir so I moved his little cushion to the cardboard box and he would sleep there, but now he kind of rotates between the top of the couch and the cardboard box in front of the couch. And he also has found a new spot, which is not really a spot, but also kind of a spot. So on the L part of the couch, the long part, it's always a mess because it's right next to my desk and I'll just like dump stuff there. So like the when mess doesn't fit on my desk anymore, I'll just dump it onto the couch and like I'll spread it everywhere around me because I'm just the messiest person alive. And uh, I always have a blanket on my on my lap or like, you know, when I'm sitting at the desk, I always like wrap it around me or have it on my legs because I get cold so easily, my little bones. And um, 
sometimes I'll just throw the blanket on the couch because I'm like getting up to go pee or whatever and I have the blanket all on me and I don't want to get up and turn around and put it on the chair like who has time for that so I get up and like throw it on the couch because that's way easier and that's what a messy person does so it'll just be like bunched up on the little like seat part L part of the couch and the other day Pepper found out that whenever I do that, it's his, it's his favorite bed. It's his new favorite bed. He just absolutely loves it. So and now he sleeps only on the blanket on the couch. That's the only way he'll sleep on the couch, just on the blanket. And I guess he loves it because it smells like me and it already has his fur all over it. So it's just like the perfect bed for him and he's sleeping on it right now and he's just so cute but the only con of that there's this is the only sleeping area for him that has a bad you know con that affects me is that when he sleeps on it i can't take it back because um that would be committing a crime and i would rather go stub my toe against the wall than wake up pepper and take away his comfy spot so I do lose a blanket in the process, like for the rest of the time that he takes his nap or sleeps. So that kind of sucks, but he seems to really like it. And that one is kind of more like a personalized sleeping spot for him. Cause like it's my blanket and it's got my scent all over it. So yeah, he kind of rotates. Well, he's been there the most on top of the blanket whenever I put it there. And then he'll still rotate between the box and the top of the couch and occasionally he will lay on my boyfriend's desk because he has more space than me, more extra space because he doesn't have crap all over his desk like me. But I don't know if that really counts because he just wants to be near his his parents. So yeah, that's been his um, that's been his journey with his sleeping areas in the office. <laughs> so now you know. I wanna hear tier lists in the comments. What's been your favorite uh, Pepper sleeping spot? You know, rank them in order of your favorite. We got the printer, we have the top of the couch, we have in front of the window, we have the box, and we have the blanket. So I'll, rate, I'll do my tier list, okay? So um, I'm gonna put the top of the couch as my number one because he blends in with the couch because the couch is also black and he's a tuxedo and he's mostly black and he just looks like a little blob and he always loafs always 100% of the time when he's on top of the couch so we get guaranteed loaf position and it looks funny so that's my number one my number two is going to be the blanket i'm taking away a point the reason it's not number one is because i do lose the blanket but it's very cute um, he's always super cute when he lays there because he like splays out because he actually has the room. Number three is going to be the printer. Um, the printer was is just a classic and I love it. So the printer is going to be number three. And then the box is going to be number four. Um, it's pretty generic. Nothing really too special about it. And then the window is going to be number five because whenever he's at the window, he inevitably comes on my desk and like steps on my keyboard and messes things up and gets in the way of what I'm doing on the screen. So that's going to be my least favorite. Okay, maybe I should actually talk about this video instead of just talking about my cat, considering I'm an Animal Crossing YouTuber. <laughs> okay, so we did bring into his cafe. I hope you just watched all of that and got the idea of what I was doing. I just fixed it up and I really love that little um, sitting area section that I did with the fountain. Super cute. And then I fixed up like the path and everything so that it connected to the little area next to the cafe on the right. So all the paths are connected. And then here I just filled in with some trees and like little stuffs. Nothing really too special. Again, these are all just kind of like awkward areas. And I find that the best way to fill in awkward areas is just nature. That's my biggest tip. Trees take up a lot of space. Um, bushes, flowers, weeds. You just throw those in there, throw a couple of those, and you can fill up like any space. It's honestly good. Like golden formula. <laughs> so after everything, ignoring the path on the bottom that I fixed, uh, this is what it all looks like. The cafe, so, so happy with it. It's a lot simpler, and I think I will add some more custom designs to kind of add some spice, but I really, really love it. And the museum area is looking a little cuter. We've got this cute little sitting area up there, and it's just great. 
So, the last area that I will do in this video is this little picnic area that is next to my flower field. And this was one of my earliest builds. I can't remember which video. I want to say my second video. Maybe my first video? No. I can't remember. I think it was my second video though. So I have been not liking this area for a while. <laughs> Same with a lot of my early builds. Who would have guessed? Um, the flowers would always grow over and just duplicate everywhere. And I felt like it just was like meh. And that palm tree that I had there was like covering everything. But I still wanted to keep the same vibe. I liked the little uh, picnic blanket and like picnic by the beach kind of moment that we were having. So I wanted to keep that. I just wanted to make it a little bit bigger too since I was just like, ah, just throw the picnic blanket. That'll take up most of the space because <laughs> I didn't really want to clutter this too much. Like I said, kind of want to keep these little transition areas, these little simple areas simple because the rest of my island's a cluttered mess, so let's not just make it a total clutter fest. <laughs> Even though I do enjoy it, but too much of anything. So I tried to keep most of the same elements. Like I said, I kept the little log bench because I thought that was cute. And I kept the little water dispenser because I really like that item. It's so refreshing and I always want to drink from it. I just want to stick my mouth straight into the spout and just go to town, you know? Delicious... Uh, fruit water. <laughs> Delicious fruit water. <laughs> Do you think it's super obvious that I'm recording this at like 1am? Let me know. But yeah, I just kept it simple, added that little coconut tree, and I liked how the fences looked, and I liked how they kind of made like a taller barrier between the beach and the land, so I decided to add those. Of course, stick in some custom designs underneath as per usual, gotta do that and just fixed up like this little tiny area of land next to this little river. Super duper easy, super cute. Finally used this pink balloon. Um, I think Nintendo did hear my prayers because in one of my first videos also, I think it was when I was um, working on this area that's directly above this picnic blanket, I asked, I was like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool if we had actual balloons instead of just these bunny day balloons because I was using bunny day balloons and they actually added them so you're welcome guys like I did so much for this community you're so welcome <laughs> and after everything here is the result and now on to fan arts our beautiful fan arts segment of the video please enjoy these wonderful masterpieces by these lovely artists thank you guys so so much all of their um info like their instagrams and stuff are linked down below in case you want to go show them some love and if you would like to submit there is a google form in the description that is going to wrap it up for today's video thank you so much for watching if you made it all the way to the end kudos to you and don't forget to like this video if you haven't and subscribe if you haven't we're actually really close to 100k i'm very very excited about it so if you would like to be part of that journey and join the wonderful beautiful froggy army please hit that subscribe button please thank you and if you would like to take your support one step further i do have merch that you can get on my teespring store linked in the description and i also have memberships all you have to do is hit that join button next to the subscribe button and you will get some awesome perks and support the channel so thank you guys so much for those of you who have already done either of those two things and if you're considering it hey, you should do it. I might be biased telling you you should do it, but hey, you should do it. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling and I this is me wishing you goodbye. Um, I'm going to ramble some more because I didn't think about what I wanted to say when I hit record. So yeah, thank you again for watching. Nope, I already said that. Uh, social media is linked below. Anything you could ever imagine to ask me, probably linked below. And yeah, thank you. Uh, don't forget to hit like. Nope, I already said that. Okay, I'm just going to go now. Bye.